TJIF, or did I say TJ? I mean, TGIF. Yes, Lendo. Thank you, Kevin. Everyone doing okay? Hope everyone had a good week that you either earned or learned, or even better, both. You earned and learned. Have a good week, everyone. I don't know, Glenn. He's very elusive. We'll see if he shows. I'd give it about a 5% chance. If, yeah, those um, are some low expectations. I Well, you know, if past performance is indicative of future results, I'd I give it about 5%. Okay, so uh, I want to toss it to you, Blake. But what I liked about this live call and S and P's, of course, you know that it worked. Hey, wait, 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 Dale. Just please, please go ahead for a few minutes because I'm managing some trades. I'm just listening in, so go ahead and take it as long as you need. Okay, bro. So what I liked about this trade, of course, you know what everyone likes is it worked for 20 handles, but it included three separate teachings. Okay. Uh, the first teaching was that we had a three drive pattern. Okay. The second teaching was that we had a stop hunt. As I said earlier in the session, before we had taken out this high, that I believed we had to take out this high to shake out every short before the correction they were looking for would happen then most likely without them because they probably had their stops over the high here so you had a three drive pattern you had a stop hunt and then can anyone guess uh, the, the third teaching I taught it in here it's so simple people probably don't even use it because it, it's too simple no not a confirm low okay what do I teach Everyone to do on their week. That's right. Hariano had it. Okay, so what's the low here? So 258.20. Here's your weekly chart. Count back two candles. One, two. And the close there was 258.30. So, okay, I see Calvin uses it, Harianto. Uh, so you could have used this as a cover because they're magnets and usually get price action off of them. So actually the low, if you wrote it down Monday and I sent out a tweet a few days before yesterday's break on what the off number was. So all I could say is what a coinkadink that the low of this break, that the plunge protection team knew to come in at two, at 24.58.20, okay? So that's what I liked about the trade, is there three of my teachings, that's all I know. So uh, I'll see you guys, I hope, I hope you learned a few things from me and you'll be able to use those the rest of your trading life. So uh, that's, I don't do a lot of trading on Friday. I, I don't even do a lot of analysis on Friday unless there's an NFP. So, you know, what do you say about things like Euro? You know, perhaps I said yesterday that we could, we could get a failing rally and I wouldn't rule out a new high and the reasons my real simple implicator work, this was pretty high momentum. So, so far, maybe we have a failing rally. But when you look at it on a weekly basis, it's a decent week. It didn't reverse. But what is interesting, and we talked about this yesterday, was what capped the euro up here is a 200-week moving, just like what capped the, the break in Canada was the same. So uh, it may have some trouble making new highs. I think it's going to be worth a shot next week to uh, at least be stalking it for shorts. And also Pound hit a lot of, uh, you know, one of the pattern in plays and for Nick. 
probably executed profits taken. Yeah, she took profit. It's a closed pen. Nick, yeah. So, 3027, she got out. Oh, okay. So that's all I have for today. I, I just, you know, and, and you know, when you have a great trade like yesterday, it's, you know, it's pretty hard to top it uh, money-wise and emotionally. So, you know, when you have a good day and you have windfalls, it's okay to do nothing the next day and, and just, you know, refresh. And at the end of the week. Yeah, end of the week, you know, at Fridays. You, you, right. you don't do much on Fridays, do you, bro? Uh, today I am. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the Friday. I, it, well, do you know, like, it, it's summer, so I, I'll just tell you, um, yesterday I had my best day in two months. Um, the day before, mm -hmm. the day before, I had probably one of my worst days in the last two months, but my good day doubled what my bad day did so uh, for example let's say I lost five grand on Wednesday I made ten grand on uh, on on Thursday which my numbers were actually quite a bit larger than that but yeah. I'm just giving you guys an example of what my week has been and then today is we were waiting for today's data um, which is, you know, was very important, obviously. And so we, we've seen a lot of volatility. So I am active. I, I just, I don't know how active I'm going to be after, you know, uh, about an hour after the open. I'm probably going to slow love down. Love those, love those comeback trades. Yeah, it was good. I mean, but, but today's not over yet either. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't well, like I've to. Gotten, I'm, I'm I've I'm got some questions and you wrote it so well last cycle. Uh, and some looks about the potential if we get risk off that there could be a pretty big trade brewing in pound kiwi. You have a view on it? I I don't, but I can okay. look. And I'm I, I the great the great news is is when I look at something I can formulate a view really fast. So know, uh, it's just not something that's not something that's on my radar right now. I, I do want to show you something that's on my radar when okay. I come back. But let's go over to the pound New Zealand. Um, the, this uh, this currency pair. Oh well, here this is probably fairly well defined. Yeah, I uh, there's nothing to do. Like to me, okay. not yeah. a, not not a thing. I mean, we're, we're sitting on a six one eight. So I guess we we could say that this is. And let me grab a. a yeah, you probably point. can't get excited till it would close back over seventy nine. I yeah exactly. We got to get yeah, above it's a rectangle. Yeah, we yeah. got to get above 180 or get below 173, and then, yeah, then okay. I can get excited about something. But, I mean, you can play the range right now. Yeah. I don't see any reason well, why is you the thesis down here. True? Is the thesis true if we get like a 7% correction in S&Ps at pound key, we will accelerate to the upside? Typically it would be, but um, – but considering that we're going through this Brexit process, I think the better trade is the Euro New Zealand, frankly. Okay. So, you know, and because the, the Euro New Zealand is a, it's is the same, it's the same trade. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So, so for me, it's like, okay, well, if I like, like, I, you know, just looking at it and, and, right. and by the way, if you guys don't know this, let me go ahead and say it right now. We are adding the uh, Euro New Zealand and pound New Zealand to Forex analytics analysis so you'll you'll see it on the daily analysis here we're adding like nine pairs maybe wow, nine pairs. yeah Same so that. so we're gonna have a lot of a lot of uh of these these uh these more exotic rates um covered which cool. yeah which is really cool i'm i'm excited about it because my i think it's cool how you responded to the community you know uh, that that's cool you know a lot of people it's my way or the highway well and, okay you know, you so know. let me let me let me address that. Um, I, I was with Wise Trade for uh, you know 15 years as their chief currency strategist, and the one thing that uh, that they often did is not respond 
to what the customer wanted. And in and and my you know everybody would be like, well, and and I'm the I was the sounding I was the 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 microphone yeah, you were, company. You were in between. I was in between. So the so they would you you, you, know, you handled pus control, Blake. I did. People would ask, you know, hey, hey why, why, Blake, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? Why isn't Wise Trade adding this and why are we doing this? And it's like I don't have any control. I mean, I can complain about it all I want, but you know, it doesn't do anything. No one listens to me, if you will. Now, I, I have a big voice in what happens with Forex Analytics. So, you know, people say, hey, we, you know, we want this coverage. I'm like, well. Gosh, damn it! Let's give it to them. You know, let's uh, let's do it. So, um, so that's what we're going to do, and we're going to be adding that this weekend. So, if you guys haven't, you know, taken your trial of Forex Analytics, this is the time to do it. Um, like right now is uh, this weekend because you're going to get a lot of. Actually, I'll be writing and posting a lot of analysis this evening because I think I'll have some time this evening as my wife is going out for drinks and uh, leaving me behind. So, watching the kids. Yes. So um, let's talk about, um, like I said, the Euro New Zealand, I think, is maybe a better option here. Uh, okay. Hold on. Okay. So what's on my radar, and I'm long, is the US dollar Mexican peso. Now, now here, here's the reason, and, and not because I'm long. I'm just happy what's happening is happening. Well, the, you pointed out yesterday, it just took out 61.8 by a little on that pullback. And it did, but you know what's more important is this: the weak GDP numbers pushed us yeah. to 17.68. We're at 17.78 right now, and the dollar hasn't even firmed. So if you put downside pressure in bonds, because you guys might have been hearing me say this, if bonds come down, emerging market currencies are going to get taken to the slaughterhouse. Right now, if you're watching like the long bond, the long bonds coming off. This it's get the here's the ten year. Bonds are just getting raked, raked over the coals. So you're gonna get this move. What could potentially happen is a squeeze above 1780. And if this squeeze happens above 1780, you can see I have an alert set up here yeah. too. I have I have already support and resistance levels all set up, but I have a couple You'll methods. You'll get your of pit target. You'll get your pit target in a heartbeat if it breaks. We up. could be up at seventeen ninety today. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way up to 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 eighteen, but we could be we could really be up there. And so, I think we need to keep an eye on that. If bonds continue to move lower, we could see this move higher in 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 the dollar against the Mexican peso. Now. One of the trades, and, and I'm going to just tell you what had happened with the U.S. dollar Canadian. I sold my Euro Canadian uh, this morning at 147, uh, 146, uh, 80, whatever. Um, I don't like the price action in the Canadian right now. Um, you know, obviously because of the the strong Canadian GDP, but it's still early. And one of the things that that we have to think about is GDP. Uh, first of all, is 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 uh, um, uh, backward looking. Okay, so it's what had happened in the past. Now we got to look forward. Um, but also, the Canadian is pretty damn good of reversing moves on Fridays. So we see we saw we saw this really big move in the dollar Canadian. Um, you know, at following the data. But I wouldn't be surprised if the dollar Canadian's back above 125, especially if the dollar starts to firm. If we start to see bonds drop and the dollar and yields go up, and you start to see the emerging market currencies come under pressure, um, that some of these commodity currencies come under pressure, it's entirely possible. So don't write off the dollar Canadian just yet. I, I think you got to keep an eye on it. And um, this Euro Canadian, I still think it could it could it could bid higher too. So um, I'm very, very closely watching the dollar right now. And, and also keep in mind that the dollar index, and I'll, I'll just go back to what had happened yesterday. We put in a nice little, nice little hammer yesterday. Now today we have a red candle right now, but it's still early. And one of the things that I was looking at is, you know, quite possibly this, uh, this, this yeah. inverted, it's very early. Yeah. It's not quite. I mean, we, we're, we're nowhere near this right now, but hey, uh, it's possible the dollar, you know, reverses these, uh, these losses. 
uh, the dollar has been beat the hell up and um, it is, you know, it, it could very easily continue uh, it's squeeze higher. I mean, I know we came off really hard today. A lot of people are like got long the dollar yesterday. They're, they got smashed this morning. They probably all got stopped out, you know, saying, oh, there I go, trying to pick the bottom like I did two, you know, uh, you know, three days ago right here. Yeah, the love shoulder. Yeah, it, well, right here I got this hammer, got that yeah. hammer, and then you got killed on FOMC day, and then the, right. then it happened to them again, bought it last night, Dollar came under pressure today. They got stopped out. They said, ah, screw it. I'm not getting long the dollar anymore. And that's usually the time where you got to start looking to be long because once it's shaken everyone out, then the market has the free reign to turn higher. And so I look at these commodity currencies. Dude, the Kiwi dollar, still down, okay? Yeah. Aussie dollar, barely higher. Okay, uh, pound looking vulnerable. Yeah, you know we could see the dollar rip, and it, it's it's entirely possible from here. And I and I don't know what you know I don't know what the catalyst may be. And and may, may, maybe um, if you look at gold, here's gold. Uh, whoops, yeah. yep, here's Turn gold. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, um, gold just did a little false break above the highs and how about if gold starts to come off gold come off bonds come off dollar starts to rally it, it's entirely entirely possible so i think we've got to be very careful especially if you're short the dollar you know you got to be very careful that it doesn't get you know thrown up in your face again um uh so anyway that's that's kind of what i'm looking at right now and 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 um you know the dollar is has come under pressure because of the you know, impl the, the employment cost index, you know, came in weaker than expected, um, you know, with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, when, when the GDP number was released, but, but overall, you know, the dollar could bounce and uh, I don't think you should write off the dollar yet. Now, uh, I think the Euro has to get below 117 for the dollar to really, you know, come, you know, screaming back, but the, but the Euro is actually holding up quite well. Um, but the euro is holding up well against a lot of crosses too. Um, that's that's an, that's another thing. You know, the euro looks pretty pretty firm on the crosses. So we'll just keep our eye on. We're going to keep our eye on the bond market, see what happens here in bonds, and uh, and and you know see if uh, see if the bond market you know buckles and if the bond market you know shows shows a little downside pressure, it should uh, put a bid in the dollar. I would think. So anyway, the, the, that's just kind of the stuff that I'm looking at pre-market right now. Um, and, and also, you know, the NASDAQ is trading really heavy. Amazon Amazon was, uh, was um, you know, it's, it's getting beat down pre-market. But what's really interesting is yesterday, uh, by market cap, intraday, uh, Jeff yeah, Bezos, well, yeah, he was the most, he was, he was the, the wealthiest person in the world, the richest man in the world. That lasted probably intraday to Bill Gates, <laughs> um, and I, uh, market obviously didn't like what what they were yeah. hearing, and, and and it reversed it. But Gates the, came in and shorted the stock. May, maybe that's what happened. But uh, their earnings were bad, so yeah. um, you know the Nasdaq, you know, could come under pressure today. How how does the how does the the currency market react to to, to that type of move? I'm not sure yet. You know, I heard, it, I saw an interesting tweet, you know, with the Amazon doing all these record numbers. I forgot whether it's FedEx or UPS, but their traffic's way down. So some guy goes, you know, something's not adding up here because they, they drop ship everything. Yeah. And, and they're, those are the carriers and they're not doing increased volume and Amazon's a big piece of their business. So something going on there. And, you know, before you go, I want to congratulate you on getting your first piece published on FX Street. Kudos. Oh, hey, that was all because of you and your 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 uh, your your uh, your connections there. So thank you very much, Dale. Well, I, I think it. I I think it's uh, more of a benefit for FX Street. to have yeah, your well, content on there. So uh, anyway, uh, congrats. Uh, it was a nice piece on the note. And one other thing, uh, we're uh, going to have special. We're going to have special. Huh? 
I was going to say, speaking of it, it's down a little bit from yesterday's close, but, uh, but you know, that's another currency that's actually holding up pretty well despite the dollar weakness today, um, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. But anyway, you were, you were going to say? Oh, that I offered the Trump cabinet a visit to hang out with me or go to Greece, hang out with Steve or Arizona with you uh, to see how a team works together. There we go. That's what we should do. <laughs> maybe, one anyway. these, maybe one of these days we can all afford to go to Greece. That'd be great. Uh, that'd, be a, that'd be a party. That Opa. Would be. Opa and Uzo, that's all I can say. And with St. Uzo, let's bring in the king of Uzo, the, Steve Mulgi. king of Uzo, I, I barely drink any alcohol. I mean, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was never my, <clears throat> uh, it was never my the kind of thing I was into. You used to, didn't you? Who, me? Stelius, I don't know if I believe that. Yeah. Oh. No, he, he's a he's funny a, guy. He's a teetotaler, huh? He's I like, like Uzo. Don't drink me. I'm I like high him. on life. I, I don't need oh. alcohol. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, go, I'm going to drink an occasional you know, glass of wine. I'll enjoy it or whatever. But you know, that's usually as far as I go. Uh, but the only thing that was missing from my life uh, currently daily is uh, hanging around with Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought maybe they could learn how a team interacts. Oh, you please know, send, all... send them somewhere else. I'm, I'm too busy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. <laughs> All right, well, um, well, hey, uh, I, I don't. We, uh, are we supposed to have Trader Dante on today, supposedly? But uh, hopefully, he may, hopefully he makes an appearance. Yeah, and you know, I'll I'll check around. You know, fifteen minutes, maybe I'll send him another tweet. But he's been elusive before, so. Okay, well, uh, well, if, if not, I'll I'll check in in about uh, thirty minutes uh, and see where you guys are at, and okay. and I might chime in after the the, the open. So. Yeah, I mean, we could we could even ask the community, Blake. I mean, it's Friday. I know Blake's active, but you know, I know a lot aren't. Nothing illegal about making it a one-hour webinar. True. Anyway, just just your. Uh, would everyone be okay with that if Tom doesn't show? And we go all go about our weekends and count up our trading results. Kevin, it's okay with Kevin. All I right. Be, uh, yeah, people are okay with it. I've done well, this. I, I usually do that on Friday. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to pass it over to Steve, regardless, right now, and uh, and 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 I'll, I'll check in with you guys be, before the before the, uh, the the top of the hour. Okay, sure buddy. Make, make right, a killing. Thank, thank you. Bye -bye. So, what you, so, Steve, nice uh, add-on exactly at your number in Nasdaq. Uh, actually, uh, actually, yesterday we top ticked Nasdaq, and as you remember, that was the target uh, we had yeah. since almost. That's what I just said. Yeah, we. I mean, yeah. you know, you don't get you don't get so that lucky. Like qualifying it with actually because I said actually uh, accurately. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, and yesterday's you know yesterday's candle is obviously uh, you know. Um, a good example of how sometimes something like the Nasdaq in this occasion can go up with the escalator and come down with the elevator. I mean, we had like um, uh, 13 uh, days, uh, up days in, during 14 days. And yesterday was also an up day, so it would, it would have been the 14th uh, when we actually attested that level. And then, boom, you know, a reversal. An outside day, which actually, if you count, engulfed like uh, six days, was it, of price action. Um, I already took half my position off at exactly 100 handles uh, from my average entry, because I had, if you remember, one entry at uh, 5,930 and another one at 5,990. So my entry was at, you know, my, my cost average was, was at 5,960. So... At 100 handles, I took half of it off because uh, what I've, I've said still applies. This is a bullish market, and we should view any kind of a move uh, initially, you know, as a correction. Uh, and now I'm going to hold the rest of uh, my position with a stop loss above the highs. So even if that gets hit, I still make 
a little bit of a profit uh, due to my risk being at the moment uh, 35 uh, handles and I took to the other half of my position 100 handles so this is now a, a risk-free uh, short for me and let's see what happens from here um, as I said yesterday um, and we did test it actually the upper end of it uh, I care to see what's going to happen in a test of this area which which gave us you know this high here so be, be, between let's say 5810 and uh, 30 we, we almost touched it yesterday, today again, um, because let's be honest, I mean, yesterday was a very impressive uh, outside key reversal. So we, we have a very interesting candlestick here that uh, shows, uh, you know, a, a potential for a, for another move uh, lower at least. I was going to um, ask you, uh, what, the way the markets came back, in particular the S&Ps, uh, do you define that as a hanging man candle? Uh, in, in the S&P, this is a hanging man. Yes, there's no question about, about it. Okay. This is a textbook hanging man. Exactly. Right. That's what I thought uh, I have, yes. Having to do with the Nasdaq, this is a much nastier candle because yeah. this was actually um, a, an outside uh, black candle and uh, a key reversal as well. Um, okay. So. And the uh, VIX, VIX put in a decent day. Yes, uh, that, that's, you actually, that's a very, you actually have a key, you have a key reversal week working in VIX. Uh, let's see the Look weekly. The to be honest, I haven't checked the weekly of the VIX. Well, that's yet. why I brought it up. Yes, you're right about it. Actually, we do. Oh, we do. surprise! We do, but uh, you know, we need to be nimble because the, this this market has. Oh, it's going to break out at this time. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, as you very well know, because we've seen it a lot of times, I know. This, this is the key trend line. Right. This so what, it's a little under, you have it under 14. At the moment, yes, it is. Yes, actually it is. Because I had, actually, I think, a 200 week and a trend line just a little under 15 on mine. Yeah, you know, it, it keeps descending. So at some point, you know, either this trend line is going to end up being irrelevant uh, or actually if we get a decent breakout, it's 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 going to be a textbook, you know, a textbook. Uh, yeah. wedge. How much how much of a retrace do you think we'll get? If it breaks out, I, I don't know and it doesn't really matter. And I'll explain what I mean. It doesn't matter. The question is not if we break out how high this this will go. But the actual question is, is it going to last? The reason I'm saying that is because we had an equivalent wedge here. We did get a very nasty breakout of it, but it lasted very, 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 little, very, very little. It was fun. So, that that was yeah. That's because it only lasted a day. That <laughs> yeah. was on that was on the uh, devaluation of the one last uh, couple summers ago. Uh, yeah, in 2016. So the question is, you know, okay, uh, at some point we'll break out and we'll see a very big spike. I have no, um, I, I have no question about it. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure about it. Uh, but the issue is, is it going to last? Is it going to be it just is. a firecracker, uh, as we've seen in the past? By, by the way, yeah. um, since we're talking about the indices, th look at what the uh, IWM did yesterday. That's the Russell. Yeah. It, it it respected the wedge. Yeah. And it it's the only tested. one that didn't have a throwover. Yeah, and it actually tested the bottom of the wedge. So let's yeah. see. This is an interesting market as well. On the other hand, the Dow uh, closed above yeah. this huge channel incrementally, but closed above this huge channel. And you know, it's this only kind, 30 stocks. Th th this kind of a divergence. It's kind of weird, and I need to remind you because many people might not remember or might not have noticed. You know, uh, historically speaking, the Dow, because it's an you know it's an industrial index, was very highly correlated to the DAX because the DAX was always heavy, you know, on uh, industrial stocks, etc. And we also see a very big divergence here. I mean, the DAX uh, topped on the 20th of June, and we have been moving lower, of course. It's not that it has been destroyed or whatever. I mean, it's it's in an orderly, perhaps a correction, 
Speaking uh, about the Dow, Dow theory is transports lead. Yes, you're right. The they, they, had a, they had a pretty lousy day yesterday. Yes. Or the day um, and um, uh, speaking about the other indices, look at the Nikkei. The Nikkei is, is still coiling. I mean, this triangle has been going on uh, for now almost a couple of months and it has tightened a lot. So sooner or later, I mean, sooner, soon, this has to break out and we need to see what's going to happen because it's either going to break higher, in which case I would expect a rejection from the wedge resistance. I I'm actually going to give it a stab to sort it up there if, if that happens, or it's going to break lower. And if it breaks lower, then it will face the support of the wedge. And if it breaks lower from there, things start getting, you know, dangerous. Um, and we also have the FTSE, which is barely, you know, it's struggling to hold this trend line, as you see. It broke, it broke below this wedge, and, you know, this, this looks more like a bear flag to me, or, or, you know, an equivalent consolidation, because it's really striving to hold this trend line. I mean, we've tested it a lot of time, a lot of times, and as long as it doesn't decisively move higher, I think that you know the chances of this trend line failing uh, increase. In which case, we should see um, uh, you know uh, uh, probably a more aggressive move towards you know 7,100, which is also Nostra the 20. Pinker, Nostra Pinker was thinking, Steve, that you know we don't get the acceleration breakdown today, um, and yeah, unlikely to fracture. It keeps the people like long. Keep, and the reason is it keeps people long. They go, oh, it was down a little bit. You know, it's not that terrible of a week. No reason to liquidate. And then something happens and they take it down hard on Monday. And then people are trapped for, say, the last, you know, two months worth of trading. They're trapped. So, Mark, uh, Mark that, says that I don't, get, I don't get much of your humor. <laughs> who said <laughs> that? Uh, Mark, uh, Mark comments here that uh, Steve doesn't get much of your humor, which, uh, you know, I, I know it sounds like that, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very hard. You know, it's different when we have company meetings, Mark, because, you know, while, while I'm here on the webinar, uh, I mean, even if we disregard completely the fact that on average on, a, on weekdays and today is a Friday, I'm sleeping like less than five hours. You know, I have to be looking at your questions, guys. I have to be um, thinking of what I want to say next because don't forget, you know, that English is not my uh, first language, etc. So, you know, that uh, skews my ability to uh, to respond to humor. Otherwise, I, oh. I, I, I can assure well, you maybe, that... Well, you know, maybe you don't think it's funny. That's possible, too. And, <laughs> you know, it, uh, anyway, so you're, you're really, you know, you remind me of this song by Tennessee Ernie Ford. 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and you're deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. How's that, man? Bravo. You know? Um, That's amazing. That's amazing, Dale. Yeah, you, uh, you are yeah. multi-talented, Dale, as we all know. Yeah, I was uh, thinking maybe just having a talk show. And you'd be <laughs> one of my favorite guests for when I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. Go ahead. Go uh, oh, ahead. no, no offense whatsoever. <laughs> So uh, actually, the Dow opened with just just sl slightly lower. I just saw that. Um, so as you see, and by the way, since we were speaking of the DAX, the DAX is currently testing the first major support uh, in in since a long time ago. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that a lot of stock indices are currently either of the precipice of you know breaking down. I mean, breaking down, we, we need to put that in context. We're not talking about, you know, something uh, radical, but of a first, you know, serious move lower. Um, but on the other hand, somebody can, somebody can interpret that, they, that most of them are on support. So what I'm trying to say is that you, you'd rather not jump the gun, but you need to keep a close eye on them. Because obviously, 
if we see some big reversal in uh, risk appetite, that is definitely, and this is a good introduction to go back to our favorite effects, that is definitely going to affect, you know, uh, the FX uh, world as well. There's no question about it. Speaking about the FX world, and, you know, I, I know we've, we've um, actually, uh, you know, told people to pay attention to it plenty of times during the past few weeks. Look at the Euro Swiss. It's a monster. And trust me, this market now has woken up. I, I, I see everywhere people commenting. Uh, and, you know, I've had, I've had very interesting conversations with Melinda. Uh, she's often on the webinar, et cetera, et cetera. And Joel, you, you remember, you had him for an interview, Joel Kruger, uh, Dale. Um, you know, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. thinking, a lot of people are still thinking that this might be the S&B. Personally, and I understand the skepticism. I honestly understand the skepticism. Personally, I'm telling you, I do not believe that this is the s and I believe that this is a true bid. Okay. And people ha have started noticing. Fans have started noticing. This thing can go a lot higher if we don't get uh, some deterioration either in the political risk of the Eurozone, which is currently quite calm, um, or some very big... Uh, around to safety, okay. Um, so you should be careful. I I'm advising against making efforts to short this. I know somebody can say this thing has moved like 300, 400 pips within like four days, which is insane for the average true range of this pair. So you know why not short it or, or, or whatever else? But I'm I'm, I'm going to tell you that I wouldn't be doing that. I wouldn't be doing that honestly. And this is the reason, of course, this is the reason that, which is something that we very rarely see. Look at this. The Euro USD is half a percent higher, and at the same time, the USD Swiss is also half a percent higher, which is insane. I mean, this uh, relationship, which is almost always perfectly inverse, they, they're currently moving in tandem. Okay, which is extremely rare. That's why we said uh, plenty of times during the past few days that if you actually uh, want to be long the dollar, you should definitely do it against the Swiss franc and not against the euro. Because you, especially if you, if you end up being right, you'll gain more uh, from this pair, which actually uh, finally is now registering today a higher high after a, a very very long time so technically speaking things are changing here okay and that's what we were seeing perhaps we might get like a small pullback to test this level or even this channel the broken channel from this point on but why not see another move higher than especially if the euro usd rolls over uh, which, okay, I mean, come on, at some point it has to give us some kind of a correction. Um, we obviously have some momentum loss here. Uh, so especially if we see a move like this in the Euro USD, the USD uh, Swiss is going to take off, completely take off. Okay. And obviously, uh, my, uh, you know, the fact remains that there is not much you can do with the Euro USD. Uh, if we get lucky, we will get a retest of 114.50, which is, you know, a horizontal uh, support resistance zone. It's also um, uh, the broken trend line that we had here of this uh, channel, which we can come back and retest it this time as support. So, you know, a lot of confluences uh, will be down there. I, I bet that we might even see something like a 23.6 fib. Uh, let's first get a verified top. And we can discuss about it then. I mean, we can draw some fibs after that. So, uh, you know, at, at any case, at any case, uh, 114 50 will be, you know, a very good level to, to look for longs. But we still need to confirm that we have a high in place. Yesterday's candle was very nice. I mean, it was a good candidate for a reversal. But today's price action has not nullified it uh, yet. 
but on the other hand, you know, adding today's price action, we have to remain skeptical. So, you know, I wouldn't be jumping the gun here, and to be honest, I wouldn't be looking to short the Euro USD. As I've said, in these kind of markets, uh, you know, unless you want to scalp it, I would rather look for a nice pullback and some indications that, you know, it's it's uh, resuming um, the um, uh, the trend because now it, in my opinion, it's a trend. And I, I think on this webinar we were, uh, you know, of the first that actually said very early yeah. that, yeah. That you were super euro, bullish down there, Steve. Yeah, and I was very crosses, bullish the euro down here. Yes, and the crosses. Yes, yes, exactly. We we even wrote <laughs> articles about that uh, on our blog post, and they were also published, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, we're the, pretty the, effing good, man. Thank you. Uh, so let's go through some of your questions. Oh, before we go some through uh, through some of your questions. We had some leftover questions from yesterday, which we didn't have the time to answer. And uh, I remember that two of them had to do with metals. So let's have a look at the metals. OK, uh, this was the zone we were looking for uh, resistance in gold, which it did give us a pullback, a two-day pullback. Uh, it was you know, the confluence of the 61.8 and this horizontal uh, support resistance zone. We're currently uh, probing the area above it. So obviously the next resistance is up here, and then we go back to this area. Okay, uh, I don't so much believe in triple tops, so uh, let me uh, say that. If we get another retest of 1,295, of course the risk reward will be to be short again because you will have a very, very tight stop loss. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm not the, of the people that believe that a third test of the same area has a high probability of actually holding. So honestly, if you are bearish the metal, you don't want to get to that point because, you know, I would say that, you know, reaching the same area for for a third time within what what is it going to be like four months roughly. Uh, on its own is not going to be a bearish event. I mean, the chances won't be 50-50 then. In my opinion, then the chances are going to be 70% of a break higher and 30% of another rejection lower. Okay, so if you're, if you're bearish, you really want to see the metal rolling over like below the 78.6. Uh, silver, on the other hand, let's have a look at it. And then we can go to today's questions. Silver, on the other hand, has has failed, hasn't managed to breach the resistance zone. When we were down here, we had drawn this little line saying that, listen, since the metal has broken now higher, I do believe that one way or another, I said, it, it's going to test this zone, which is the 1675 zone. And it did. But yesterday, it produced a key reversal, uh, also a shooting star. Um, unless we break above it to invalidate it, since this also confluences with the 61.8 and, uh, you know, a zone we had already marked, I would be very cautious with silver here. Okay, so if you actually had, uh, you know, the nerve to take a long at the crash, I think that's a very, very good place to offload you know, some of your exposure, some. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, the metal cannot move higher, but I'm saying, you know, this is the point that you should be a little bit cautious because this is an area that can actually reject price action. Okay. Um, so uh, having said that, let's now go to today's questions. Uh, what about oil and CAD? If WTI spikes down, shouldn't CAD shoot up? Yes, but as uh, Mike, as we've said, the relationship is not so straightforward as it used to be in the past. One of the reasons is that U.S. also is now a producer. Eh? So, I mean, theoretically speaking, uh, they, they also benefit somewhat. Um, USD at 200 week SMA, risk is now to the upside, Seldon says. Definitely, the risk reward is not to be short here. The the US do, uh, the US dollar. We we've said that before. Um, 
obviously nobody can doubt that it remains at a very bearish mood but yesterday we tested this zone was not drawn yesterday we had it since a long long time back in this chart we tested a very critical area and we showed we produced a very nice response today so far is an inside day so that does not invalidate what happened yesterday but honestly speaking uh, obviously the risk reward is not to be short here I mean that would be crazy where would you put your stop loss but I would be you know I, I am cautious I would still want to see a little bit more confirmation okay uh, thank you for the nice comments everybody since you're counting waves is usd cut on abc correction on monthly chart with uptrend channel line around 122.70 okay okay let's see time to throw in a freebie here eh? you know i do use elliot waves quite a lot as i've said in the past but since that's not my only tool okay yes as you see this is the main scenario of uh, Greg as well this is Greg's weekly analysis as you see but don't forget that always an ABC has the potential of transforming to a one two three right of course initially uh, because we, we should always keep minimum expectations, it should be considered as an ABC, right? But even if that's the case, as I've said plenty of times in the past, this was an impulsive move. This was a corrective move. This is an impulsive move. Uh, this move targets definitely lower prices than we currently have. So any rebound, as I've said, to 128 to 130, roughly from what I see, it's an area that Greg is looking at as well is a sell and that's what I'm going to be doing and the same exactly the same kind of wave count applies for the USD knock okay I know you we, you, we, you didn't ask for that but you know since we mentioned it already the test the breakout trend line Zach says this am ah yes uh, about the USD CHF correct please the Aussie Kiwi yes Lorraine we're going to have a look at it now isn't there an inverted head and shoulders in go on gold on the four hour chart? Okay, we're going to have a look at that as well. Okay, uh, let's take it. Uh, so, Steve, do you see the correlation euro higher, DAX lower, and Bund lower? And if so, uh, you see this bias trend now set till after drag in September at least. Okay, so yes, uh, let's answer to this because it's simple and then we can go over the charts that we mentioned. So, uh, yes, obviously, since a lot of investors that put in their money to European stocks are not European uh, an appreciation of the euro makes it cheaper uh, or, I mean a movement of the euro makes it cheaper or more expensive for them so an appreciation more expensive for them to invest which means that naturally there is an inverse bias having to do with the movement of the currency and um, uh, you know uh, how the DAX performs and the rest of the European stocks uh, now having to do with the boon being lower generally speaking boon moving lower means uh, higher rates which means that euro should be bid but on the other hand since all currency crosses are crosses it also very, very important is also that the uh, interest rate differentials so what I mean is if at the same time the treasuries are uh, dropping so the US yield is moving higher and the bond uh, is doing the same theoretically speaking you shouldn't have um, uh, you know that should not affect the euro USD okay so it depends on the interest rate differentials how much does the bond fall in comparison to the interest rates of X currency you want to uh, you know you want to see the euro with um, 
So uh, Draghi is definitely going to, to move the market. And until then, I don't think that we're going to see any real fireworks because the, the market is expecting, uh, you know, that to actually, you know, see if they need to reposition, etc. So now let's go to have a look at the Aussie Kiwi. Okay, we found support at the 200 uh, daily moving average. Okay, that's uh, something positive. The prior move here can definitely inter be interpreted as, as impulsive in a sense. But you know something, uh, just look at it like this. We still remain in the middle of what you can call a triangle, let's say. So would I be long or short here? I was long when I saw the inverted head and shoulders. And it paid out. That was a nice, clean formation. But would I do something right here, right now? If I hadn't dumped my longs here, probably I would trail my stop be below, you know, this low, which is also the 200 EMA, and hope for the best. Since I'm not involved at the moment, and if you're not involved at the moment, I wouldn't be doing anything, honestly. Uh... Okay, um, there was a question about the gold four-hour chart. Okay, let's have a look at a four-hour chart of the gold. Of gold. Do you mean this? Because we had already indicated that at the bottom. Because if you mean this, we had already even traded it. I mean, we had a pattern in plain Forex Analytics for it. If you mean this, and its target has already been completed. So, yes, this was an inverted head and shoulders formation, which we, uh, we have already completed. So it's not a formation that, you know, that we can expect to produce anything more at the moment. Uh, because I'm not seeing on the four hour we chart. Close back under 61.8, Steve, and your red channel line. That could offer a shorting opportunity that kind of ties in with uh, Lake's belief that dollar bears could get squeezed in the next week or so. Yeah, I can tell you one thing, and as you saw on the four hour chart, because when I, when I switched to it, I had silver. I can tell you one thing for sure is that gold and silver are very well behaved. Yeah. And as you see, they are both respecting, let's redraw this a little bit because, okay. As you see, you know, this move is channeled. So, you know. And is there anything impulsive about this rally that you see? It looks like a grinding down first and then a grinding up. Uh, no, that's the thing, and that's why I don't have a strong bias about the metals at the moment. Because look at those it's moves. Like the whole chart is corrective, almost. Yes, yes, exactly. When you see usually one move that you cannot straightforward interpret as impulsive, followed by another one that's on the other direction, and then the same and the same and the same, what this tells me is that in general we are currently in some kind of I mean, both for silver and gold, we're like an A, B, C, D, E, or yeah, you know, what something, yeah, 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 <laughs> something like that. I mean, you know, look at this. S something is brewing here. You know what I mean? But it, it it might need more time. It might need more time to manifest. Silver as well, as you see, it 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 keeps respecting this ascending channel. But silver hasn't broken above the 61.8 yet. Okay, mm -hmm. that's that's the only difference in the it, short it's term. It's really it's really hard to gauge the fib levels too after those ridiculous spikes that we saw. To be honest, Blake, uh, and uh, and I've done that in the past plenty of times, and I've seen that it works. I completely ignore this kind of crashes having to do with drawing fibs completely, as you see here as well, completely. Yeah. yeah. I completely ignored it. I think it skews the technicals because this this is sorry for for my language this is bullshit price action you know what I mean what would you say Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> the sensor the sensors are out <laughs> how graphic 
Oh my God. Not, is, that, is that graphic in Greece? Because on CNN, I've heard a lot worse than that lately. Go ahead. <laughs> don't don't uh, worry, guys. No, okay, I'll, I'll have him. I will have him punished later. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Weep me. <laughs> oh shoot. Oh shoot. Yes. <laughs> wrong. Wrong ball. Go ahead. Okay. And I really need to go over this because, God, I haven't, I don't even know if I have analysis on this. Honestly, uh, l let me see who asked about it. Nick, Nick, oh my God, man. How did you think of the CAD Swiss? How did you think of the CAD Swiss? But to be honest, the CAD Swiss... Well, the CAD's been on the move. I mean, you know, it's it's uh, it's worth a, it's worth a the look. The Swiss is on the move as well. Yeah, so, you know, the CAD Swiss might be one of those that you can get a pretty severe bounce, and I haven't even looked at the chart. You know something, Blake? It's coming this out chart, of here. This chart smells of a huge yeah. bottoming pattern, yeah. which can even be interpreted as a huge... And shoulders, yes. complex, complex one. Not the most pretty one, yeah. right? Yeah, or an ascending triangle or something, yeah. Or just a symmetrical. <laughs> anyway, it looks like it's... The, uh, one way or another, th this is potentially a very strong bottoming pattern. Is there a big gap from, like, uh, what happened in July on the way down that there's, like, a red line that took it to this the one. Lows? No, no, this, this yeah. one is the floor, the S&B floor, mate. It's when it collapsed. Oh. oh. Oh, okay, in August. Yeah, all right. So that's a long time for it to be basing, two years. You know something? Hmm. Oh, Nick. he's going to buy it. Hmm. He's thinking Let's... about it. Stelio, scrap Steve's mouse. Somebody take away the keyboard. <laughs> I'm, I'm a few kilometers away, so I can't do it. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god. Oh, he, I, I love it when I love it when you're on air. I do this too. When you're on air and you talk yourself right into a trade, it's just it's fantastic. <laughs> I do that crap all the time. Yeah. How did you miss it? Oh, come on, gonna, cut Swiss, honestly. Uh, Swiss, Swiss he's going to wait for this for pullback century. now. Like, Swiss was dead for a century. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know what they say, Steve, the markets top with violence and bottom in silence. That's a classic. Saucer bottom, you know, terminal action near the lows. And wow, what a long-term base, two-year base. How yeah, many did you buy? This is the highest. This is the highest daily RSI we've had since yeah. here. He hasn't quite talked himself into it. Yet. Close. So. Very nice. Oh yeah, he's know. close. For me, for me, this is confirmation. Yeah, I'm gonna buy it on a pullback. I'm telling you I'll already. See. You won't do it today. No, I'm not gonna do it today. But I'm you gonna buy it on. What if it doesn't pull? What if it doesn't pull back, man? I won't buy it. Then. Yeah, you, you miss it. That's it. Oh, how it is. Oh, put a half on half size position. See, you're too emotional. Yeah. Too emotional, Dale. I know. You, okay. You got, Thank you, Nick. You let it Thank back. you. Yes, I'm. I, I like it very, very. Stop much. saying that about me. <laughs> I like it very much because uh, because as I've explained plenty of times, I'm 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 really uh, short bias the Swissy. And I really believe, I've said it many times analyzing the USD CAD, I really believe that the CADs move higher. The CADs, not the USD CADs, the CADs is not over. So, yeah. 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 Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Ah, you see you see how see, nice. I mean, see, we're I not only giving, we're also receiving. Uh, here. I, I, well, that's the, way, that's the way I used to run a room. You'd be surprised how many great ideas are sitting no, right I, in that question I, box there. And that's why get, Blake has Blake has his private uh, club. So I get I, I get I get I get half of my ideas from other people. Yeah. I mean, it's not you know I I do, 
people bring it's especially when I was doing the the morning edge, people would say, Hey Blake, what about this? What about that? What about this? And I would be like, right. damn, man, that looks good. And you know, I'd say, Hey, it do exactly what you said, Steve. You know, it's like, Hey, thank you very much for bringing that to our attention. Cause now everybody's, everybody sees it. And, um, right. you know, social man, trading, social trading, buddy. It is. And especially when you got some, you know, some, some keen eyes on the market, which, which we do, um, watch this peso guys, this peso, it doesn't matter if crude's going up. It doesn't even matter if bonds are going up. This dollar peso is extremely, extremely buoyant right now. It's very vulnerable to a squeeze. So, just uh, uh, speaking, speaking of the cut switch, sorry Blake, be careful here. We're at resistance, as you see. We have a channel, so obviously buying it here makes not much of a sense. But retesting this trend line, sure, which comes at around, you know, it depends on when we hit it, but it comes just below 0.77. Sure, count me in. Even if it comes down to 76, 10, you know, this consolidation. Sure. Nice. Thank you very much, Nick. So, Blake, yeah. uh, uh, you want me to pass it to you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure I, you want I to. Move that, I move that we wrap it, wrap the session. Yeah, um, I mean, beautiful I mean, what, discovery. What are we going to talk about? I, you know, the, yeah. the, it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, good discovery at the end. Uh, again, we proved the power of the face community. Is uh, you know, it's a it's it's a give and take, and uh, you know I would uh, really even request some looks, Steve, while you're doing going through your stuff. I know a lot of people ask questions, but I've also noticed a lot of people posting. So if we encourage them to post, you're going to see more stuff, and it won't just Definitely. be. You know, uh, and whenever I see, I have to tell you uh, guys and girls, whenever I see somebody put uh, a link for a chart. Uh, yeah, you like ah, I just saw Conrad has, for example. Um, I, I I will show it. I mean, we've we've shown chat, so let's see what he what she's looking at. Okay, this is gold. Oh, so you're you're talking about a bigger pattern here. Yeah. Now I see what you mean. Yeah, that's bad. It looks valid. Yeah, it does. Yeah. See. It does. So a bigger one. Uh, to, to be honest, I would have liked to see. You know, I I. Generally, I don't like shoulders that are, that are yeah, yeah, you know, so my little, I mean, this shoulder is okay, this one, but yes, okay, I mean. Well, I mean, your shoulders aren't as big as Stelios because he's been hitting the freeways. So, <laughs> so that's Stelios' <laughs> shoulder is on the left, lean. And, and there's you know your it, shoulders, man. Steve, on the right. Um, Craig asks uh, if we can if we can have a look at the cryptos, and I don't know, Blake. Uh, I don't know what you see in the cryptos having to do with the basic technical technical analysis, but I can tell you one thing. Uh, definitely, Bitcoin has been recovering, and I'm going to show it. But Ethereum, Ethereum has been uh, is actually still confined by this descending channel. So as long as this is the case, um, and, and if you see a ratio of Bitcoin to Ethereum, it has actually, you know, um, it, it has actually been going up, uh, I mean, quite aggressively. Uh, so un unless we see Ethereum break above this descending channel, you know, I, I cannot be constructive with it. But on the other hand, uh, hand Bitcoin has reclaimed, it actually used this correction, uh, in essence it created a bull flag and you know the move lower as we even wrote in analysis found support on a closing basis at the 38.2. So I remain constructive Bitcoin but I'm way more skeptical about Ethereum, Craig. Ethereum, <laughs> Ethereum, that's a takeoff on Aquarius. So and, uh, and, you know, and we have to Blake's, we have Blake's to remind we have to favorite. remind everyone an hour earlier Monday uh, face yes yes that's very hour important earlier. An hour earlier on Monday yes and Blake's um, uh, my uh, Greek fat weddings uh, favorite moment Ethereum comes from the word Etheras which is in ancient Greek oh the air. For <laughs> Everything's from Greek. So I, I, I needed to say that for the following reason. 
How comfortable do you feel owning something that its name means that it's air? <laughs> Just think about well, it. you know, easy to, easy to carry around. Uh, easy to carry around, but on the other hand, completely intangible, right? <laughs> well, Steve, I want to thank you for your analysis and your hot air today. Uh, Blake, Blake uh, great comeback trading this week. Stelios, it was fun interviewing you. Maybe next week we'll talk to, uh, get a chance to talk to Nick and Grego. They'll drop by. Definitely. Uh, definitely. You know, I, was on vacations. I think there's a pretty good lineup of uh, interviews next week. Uh, I think Monday, Adam Button's going to give us a look ahead at the month of uh, August with the seasonals. And I have a Colin, I can't pronounce his last name, but he's with CMC. Uh, and we're topping off the week, and I really hope he shows. Uh, a lot of people said they've learned how to trade from him. It's going to be Chris Laurie on Friday. So, awesome, Chris. Uh, Chris is a great guy. I've done I've done a couple of events with him. He's a sharp, sharp, sharp man. So, yeah, yeah he, that should be uh, very interesting to, just to find out what he's doing now. King, yeah, he's King Carry Trade, so it'd be interesting to hear what he has to say. Anyway, I got I got to get hopping, guys. Have, have a great, great weekend. weekend. Have a great weekend, Blake. Have a great Thank weekend, you. everybody. Have a great weekend, Steve Stell. Face, bye bye. have a great weekend. All right, do your homework over the weekend. I know the guys are going to be working very hard for you to get nine pairs up as soon as possible. So. Um, Enjoy your summer weekend and see everyone Monday, God willing. And most of all, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessing. Our mission statement here at FACE is to build up and edify traders every day. And I'm hoping that we accomplished our mission again this week. And if you haven't tried it yet, click the link for the $1 trial and I'll refund it to you if you found, found no value. Okay, so thank you, everyone. And you know what? You know what? Bring more of your looks next week to the table, and we'll get Steve to share more of your views. Um, if you put them out there, we'll show your views because you can help us too. I've seen evidence of it. So uh, do your homework and bring your best to the table next week. See you, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. Adios.